So, um, if we label this axis that I have there on your paper, okay, we start on the positive x-axis, so that is zero degrees. We've got 90 degrees on the positive y-axis, we have 180 degrees on the negative x-axis, 270 is the negative y, and then if we go all the way around, 360 degrees is the same as zero degrees. Okay, so if we have 95 degrees, oh, also we're talking about quadrants, we need to make sure we label our quadrants correctly. Okay, one, two, three, and four. Remember those are labeled counterclockwise. So 95 degrees is in quadrant two. What if I ask you about a negative angle? Mm, okay, negative 135. Well, you've got two choices. You could find a positive cotonal angle. That's one option. Or you can just label it this using negative angles. Okay, uh, so 270 degrees is the same as negative 90. It's rather convenient that positive 180 degrees and negative one, uh, 180 degrees are the same. So negative 270 is up here at the top and negative 360 is the same as positive 360. Okay, just based on co-terminal angles or your orientation of, of rotation. Okay, um, so negative 135 is where? Quadrant 3. Quadrant 3. Quadrant 3. Okay, so let's look at some radians. Okay, let's look at radians. So I'm going to label my axis this time with radians. So we've got 0, this is pi over 2, this is pi, and this is 3 pi over 2. And then 2 pi is, of course, the same as 360. So 23 pi over 6. I've got to figure out where that falls. Okay, so 23 over 6, 24 over 6 is 4. So we're talking about more than one rotation here. So I'm actually going to reduce this. I'm going to find the coterminal angle so it's easier to deal with. 23 over 6 minus 12 over 6 gives us what, 11 over 6? 11 over 6 is just short of 2 pi, right? Because 12 over 6 would be 2. So what quadrant does that put? Oh, uh, yes, it does. It puts us in the fourth quadrant. Okay, let's look at a negative one. All right, so 3 pi over 2 is the same as negative pi over 2. Pi and negative pi are the same. Pi over 2 and negative 3 pi over the 2 and negative 2 pi right here. So negative 5 pi over 3. 5 over 3 is just short of 6 pi over 3, which would be 2, so going in the negative direction, that would mean we're in the first quadrant. Okay, 4 pi over 7. 4 pi over 7. Yes, would be in the third quadrant. Okay, it would be in the third quadrant. So how do we know that? Because uh, half of 7 is 3.5. No, 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 hang on. No, it would be in 2. It would be in 2. I'm sorry. It would be in 2. Because half of 7 is 3.5 and 4 is just a little bit more than 3.5. Okay, so 4 over 7 is just a little bit more than half. So that would be in 2. Okay, now, why did we just go through all that? Um, first of all, just to get you thinking about where these angles are located, just by looking at their measures, okay? But really, why we're talking about this is because something very important is something that we call a reference angle, okay? We call them reference angles. So a reference angle, this is another definition that we need to be familiar with, 
is the measure of an angle not in the first quadrant. Now, the reason why we don't talk about ones in the first quadrant is because the measure of the angle would technically be the same thing as the reference angle, okay? So we talk about it in the second, third, and fourth. It's the measure of the angle to the closest horizontal axis, and I have that in red because a lot of people mess that up and they want to measure it to the closest axis. So if your angle is closer to the y-axis, then they, they want to measure that for the reference angle, but that's not what we need to do. We need it to the closest horizontal axis. Uh, reference angles are always positive and they are always less than 90 degrees or less than pi over 2. So what I have on your notes there are three different angles, one in the second quadrant, one in the third, and one in the fourth. So let's look at what the reference angles would be. So this first angle right here, if this angle were, and I'm going to use some Greek letters that we haven't, but you may have, may not have used in the past. Uh, this is alpha. It looks like the little Jesus fish, but it's really alpha. Okay, it doesn't have a pointy nose. It has a round nose. It's the Greek letter alpha. Okay, um, its reference angle is the measure of that angle to the closest horizontal axis. So this is the reference angle right here. Okay, and I'm going to label it RA. So how would we find the measure of that angle right there? Okay, perfect. Okay, it is 180 minus the alpha. Okay, and that's if it's in degrees. If it's in radians, then we would do pi. Um, we do 1 minus the alpha. Okay. Um, now, I don't want you to look at this from the perspective of, oh my goodness, I'm going to have to memorize all three of these things. Okay. I'm just pointing this out so that you recognize what you need to do. I don't want you to memorize this. I want you to understand why it, why it comes from what it, what it comes from. Okay? Because we're that many sh degrees short of making that whole 180 degree angle. Okay, so if we have one in the third quadrant, let's call this angle beta. It's a B with a long tail on it. It's the Greek letter beta. Okay? Here is its reference angle. Okay, the measure to the closest horizontal axis. So, how would we find that measure? Mm. Well, that is actually part of that is one way to find it. Okay, but if we use beta, how about beta minus 180? Okay, because we've gone past 180 degrees, but just by that much. So we take the whole angle and subtract that 180 degrees to get that little piece right there. Or it would be beta minus pi if we were in radians. No, because that would be finding the measure to the vertical axis. Okay, and then finally we have this angle in the fourth quadrant. Let's call this one theta. Okay, we use thetas a lot. It's a, uh, uh, an O with a line horizontally through it. Okay, so its reference angle is right here. Okay, it's not the little bitty angle because the little bitty angle is to the vertical axis. Reference angles are always to the horizontal axis. So how could we find that one? 360 minus theta. It's that much short of 360 degrees, or it's that much short of 2 pi, so we subtract the angle from those two numbers to get that missing chunk right there. Okay, so we got to know where our angle is to know whether we're subtracting it from 180 or subtracting 180 from it or subtracting it from 360. We got to know where it's located first. Okay, so let's find some reference angles here. 210 degrees. So quick sketch of what 210 degrees is. It's just past 180. So it's in this quadrant right here. So its reference angle would be 30. Its reference angle would be 30. Because we're just past 180. So we're talking about this little piece right there. So we need to subtract 180 from that whole angle. Okay. Negative 295, so negative 
five is actually up here in our first quadrant. Okay, so we are looking for this piece right here. What would make 295 equal to 360? Um, I mean, there are a couple of different ways that you could do it. Uh, you could add 360. That would work in this situation. Um, but I prefer to just look at it as I'm missing that piece of a complete circle. So, what, 65 degrees would make that a complete circle? Reference angles are always positive. Yeah, reference angles are always positive. Questions on the degrees before we move to radians? Now, radians, I think, are usually easier, honestly, with reference angles, because there's a neat thing that always happens with radians. Uh, five pi over six. Five over six is just short of one. So that means we're in this quadrant right here. How much short of one are we? One sixth. This reference angle is pi over six. Okay? Radians are always going to end up having the same denominator. Okay, if you haven't noticed that, radians are always going to end up having the same denominator. If they don't, you've done something incorrectly. <clears throat> okay, let's do a negative one. Negative 7 pi over 3. Well, 7 over 3 is more than 2, so we've gone around once and a little bit more. Okay, how much more did we go over? 1. We went over 1 third, so that's got to be the, that little piece right there. We went over one third, so that reference angle is pi over three. Okay. Now, I'm going to be honest, I've made it look very, very simple. Reference angles are typically what people struggle with a little bit more. Um, so you'll notice there on your worksheet when you flip it over, I thought it would be helpful if I went ahead and gave you the diagram, okay, for you to look at the angle so you can see um, what you're looking at. Now, for some of these, it may be helpful if it's more than one rotation. It may be helpful to find a coterminal angle to kind of simplify things a little bit um, in order to, to find those reference angles. Okay? So, uh, work on 25 through 34.